So, recording? Yeah, well, so welcome to the Project Fit podcast. Um, I've got my special guest, Kevin Amoko, on today. Um, Kev's a PT from kind of North London-ish, North Central London. Um, and I'm going to, do you know what, I'm going to let you do your intro and shoot. So just tell the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing this and yeah, who you help, because I think that's massively important. Yeah, Greg, right? Um, yeah, for, uh, thanks for inviting me on, um, firstly. So I know we discussed that doing this some time ago, so it's nice to get a ball rolling, you know? Yeah. But, but um, about me, um, well, I'm just a guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> I'm just a guy, yeah. come on. <laughs> I'm an average guy, you know? Um, I'll come on to the after, but yeah, in terms of... Uh, Work wise, obviously, yeah, I do a one to one uh, personal training. I do some online work as well. Yeah. Um, again, most of my clients are kind of busy women, uh, 30 plus. Yeah. Almost just some um, hectic lifestyles. Some have uh, children and they just want me to give them a solution to their weight, weight loss problems. Okay. Um, again, I think, yeah, locations covered out. So, kind of, um, Old Street, I've got a place in St. John's Wood and in more central London too. So, okay, nice. Yeah, I, like to, I like to move around, you know. Yeah, obviously. Okay, awesome. So I think we've we've connected on various courses and stuff over the years. Yeah. And kind of, yeah. uh, we finally caught up. We went for a little. We went yeah. climbing and bouldering the other day. Well, not the other, but a little while, a couple of months back, and that was fun. Um, we talked about doing this podcast. So yeah, I'm just glad to get glad to um, get it rolling, like you said. So my first question is this: What's the biggest problem um, that the ladies that you know? you help come to you with what are the what are the biggest questions that they always have um you know what it is for me the biggest thing is it's actually them just getting started mm-hmm. you know, come to you and um they may t- typically say all right this is no this is my job here's my situation maybe what one or two kids busy, busy schedule and um over over the years they've tried all of these different things to help them lose weight yep always end up back at back at square one so often I find that with most of the ladies that come to me, it's like, it's almost like information o- overload, you know. Mm-hmm. Do I do low carb? Do I do keto? Do I go vegan? Do I do lost cardio? Or do I do weights, high reps, kind of low, low weight, high reps? So there's all of these things that, you know, we're almost trying to say, hey, you know, let's just strip it down. Let's break, break, it, break it right down. Mm-hmm. But firstly, let's find out about you. You know, what, what's a normal day like? What's a normal week like? You know, when we know what your kind of routine is, when we kind of get this fitness stuff to fit around your routine and not the other way around. Yep, that's massive. Yeah, I think, yeah, a big thing is um, the individual sat in front of us and, you know, how do we... It's like, okay, you, you said we've done a lot of courses together, right? Yep. So we know that all the training and nutrition stuff, it's a, it's a science, right? The science is all there. Mm-hmm. So then for me, right, we've got the science on one side and now the art is the person in front of us. How do we mold the science into, um, to that person? Sorry, I just had to, yeah, that, because that's perfect. I think, and I was, it's funny because I was having a discussion with another coach um, yesterday. Um, I was on her live and we talked about this, that there's all this information out there, yeah. but people just don't understand when to apply it, yeah. how to apply it, and in what context to apply it. Like that, yeah. So Context is quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah. So would you think you so how do you get that kind of context over to them? Because I think people like black and white. Yeah, that yeah. They really struggle with having this grey in the middle, which is where I guess it is. You know, yeah. I think for me a big thing is um let's uh, let's say for example, um Okay, look, you look at um say veganism has grown, right, over really recent years. Now I'm I'm not anti or pro anything. I'm almost pro what can a client follow. Yeah. So yeah, I like to eat meat, but I've got some clients who've done very well who are vegan, and some, yeah, yes, yeah, some who are vegan, right? And which of my approach is okay. You believe in okay, you don't want to, want to eat meat, which which is fine. So we now need to find ways for you to get enough protein. Mm-hmm. But that that's when we're trying to force you to eat meat, you know. So we can now just do some research on the recipes. Yeah. So I think with what with what you've asked, um, it's a case of someone somebody has a philosophy that they're almost too they're too rigid. Yep. Um, so again, uh, going yeah, kind of going back to your question, um, for me, okay, what are the pr- pros and cons of such such approach? Because even even if let's let's say I believe in doing six days of weight training, 
You know, I, I may, I've made stuff about for the last 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. But I need to be able to sit down and tell you or my client the pros and cons of such approach. Because mm-hmm. if I tell the pros of my, the pros of my approach, then there's kind of something, you know, has gone wrong there, right? right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So do you find that people um, come to you and want you to just give them one answer for one problem? Yeah, it's not. Nah. Yeah. Like often, for example, um, has, had a guy ask me to shop yesterday. He goes, oh, so can you, just, can you just give me a meal plan? You know, or an, another good one. So say you've got that one client who's doing very well, but everyone starts, starts looking at her. Then they ask, oh, so well, no, what, what, did you, what did you do? How did you get your results? And it's like, I, I can't, okay, look, I'm going to break it down to you, but it's not like just one, you know. Yeah. It's not yeah. just a case of do this. Or okay, she may have done it this way, but that approach may not work for you. Although we can, we can take elements of that approach, it's not a case of she done this, so you do the same thing. And, and that's so true, because I think what happens is people see these befores and afters, yeah. but yeah. they don't know the story behind yeah. the before yeah. and after. Yeah. They don't know the person's circumstance. And also, yeah. they don't know what happens to the person after the six-week program. I was going to say, after, after, yeah. So I think six months after, 12 months after. You know what's funny? Um, all right, we're not going to say name, names. Up. There's a very well-renowned uh, company, the kind of central London transformation company. And a while ago, they were churning out kind of three or four good before, befores and afters. Mm-hmm. And there was a stage where they got very aggressive towards their marketing towards the, with women. And I'll bring this up as I think it was about maybe two years ago. In the period, in the period of about, say, three or four months, I had about, I think, four women come from this, uh, this gym. Yeah. And then they kind of give me the same story. So literally, it was, all, it was a very black and white approach. And what's funny is all of them said they couldn't wait until they finished. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So bear in mind, you have a client and, certain, and such client says to you, oh, Greg, so when does this, when, when does this plan end? Whereas to me, it's, it's a bit worrying, you know, if my client says to me, okay, Kevin, when does this uh, nutrition plan you gave me, you know, when, when does it end? That means, have I been too rigid? You know, is it too hard for you to follow? Yeah, because it, it, I think what's happened is, is like we had this approach in fitness that you had to go beast mode. You had to um, smash yourself into the ground to really, you know, to really get awesome results. Like you had to, I don't know, break yourself almost in order to be, to look and feel healthy, right? Yeah. But I think where we come from is about sustainability. And I, I don't know about you, but I want my clients to work with me and I want them to go and actually yeah. go and live their lives, right? Yeah. But yeah, like you say, a lot of these programs are really aggressive, but they don't solve the problem. Yeah. It's almost, I mean, could we say many of these programs are papering over cracks? Because I think um, for me, all right, we have a new client. One of the best things that um, a new person can take away is building some, some very good habits in the first kind of 30 days mm-hmm. as, a kind of, as a foundation. Yeah, well, it's like trying to build a house on rocky foundations, isn't it? So it's like you start this program and you get a meal plan you have to follow that meal plan. Um, you have to train five days a week and do cardio. Like the, you know, the yeah. woman, the 35 year old yeah. sales manager from central London, it just ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of trying to squeeze a client into your training program, whereas it should actually be. Oh, yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Okay. So what do you think are the biggest myths that your clients believe or hear all the time that you want to, um, so but just, just before you go to that one. So as you know, I have my favorite person, Shelly down the road. Yeah. Legend. legend. <laughs> um, but just, just so you know, there's, there's also Karen from accounts, which I believe another PT Cool Shane they're, has. They're growing, man. The squad's growing, you know. Yes, yeah, it's a family. It's a family. The squad's of... growing, you know. And yeah. Well, obviously, though, these you know what's people... funny, yeah? yeah. Sorry, you know what is funny? You've, um, you have, you have, um, right, everyone knows this person in, in at work, yeah? What's amazing is that the confidence in which they say, say these things, you know? Like, just for sheer confidence, like, you know, I was... Well, it's that whole thing of, right, okay, look, so the other day I cut my, my own hair, right? Mm-hmm. 
And you know what? I missed a bit at the back and I've done it twice now. And my dad's a barber. So I was like, why not just go to him and get it done rather than trying to cut my own hair? And I think that's how fitness has become. Like people will go to their mate down the road. Yeah, yeah that's a yeah, good. To, um, to, to, to get their fitness advice, maybe because they're slim already or whatever. Um, but they won't go to a fitness professional to help them properly. So yeah, just going on to those myths. Go on, t- talk me through some of those myths that you hear. Uh, man, there's, well, it's, there's an archive, but I'm gonna, one of my fav- favorite ones. You know, I'm obviously, I've got some, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, oh, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna show us your fridge and what you have in there. Oh, man, that's, man oh, you can't be drinking this, man, you know. You can't be oh, drinking this, it's to- toxic, you know, isn't it? It's going to keep you cancer. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, no, so you're not allowed any fizzy drinks, no aspartamine and all that kind of stuff yet? Yeah. Okay. I can't, can't have that. Man. Can't have that. It kills you. Okay, cool. What else is there? Yeah, no, uh, meat, it rots your liver, it rots your stomach or whatever, or gives you cancer, whatever. Whatever meat? the claim. Who, who said that one? I've, I've heard it. Well, I've heard it, you know. Supposedly meat rots your stomach, you know. And, Oh Lord! Okay, cool. Any more? My, my, my days number then, you know. But <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're all in trouble. We're all done for. Okay, any more? Just a couple. I think uh, the good one. You know what is? I I don't actually give my clients any cardio to do. Okay. So I find a big one amongst women is that um, there's this belief that um, if you want to kind of drop body fat, kind of tone up, get leaner, you've got to do cardio. Yep. Um, I guess I guess that's based on. Some people start training and, you know, they feel the sweaty, heart's beating, so it feels like they've done something, it feels like they've worked. Yeah. Right. We, we may give them a weight session and say, hey, like, you've got these four exercises, two-minute break after this one, 60-second break there, 45-second break here. And they walk out thinking, you know, I'm not in pain, so, you know, I've not, you know, something's gone wrong, you know, I'm not aching, I haven't, I haven't worked, so to speak. They so I'm now going to do a half-hour run just to... Burn some more calories kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's a big one. I think that still really pervades that you either have to do loads of reps with really light weight, um, or you have to do loads and loads of cardio um, to, to 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 lose fat. Don't get me wrong. I think there is a place for cardio in people's health. I totally agree that, um, or some form of conditioning type work. But Come on, that. Yeah, I think for me, um, I'm. It's more a case of I've never said to a client, all right, you've got, you've got to do three times 30 minutes of treadmill kind of cardio. So I'm, I'm always big on, you know, daily activities, cycling, swimming, housework. And hey, if, if, you, have to, if you happen to just, just love a treadmill, by all means go for it, you know, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, don't, just don't think that it's essential to your goals. Yeah, and I think that's what your... I guess that's where your skill set is, right? Is this deciphering what is going to be essential stuff and cutting the crap. Because I think that's where people go wrong is, is the overload of information. I think we talked about it a bit earlier. Just this overload of fitness information. But also how it's written. So it'll be written as like how, how to finally get the abs that you deserve, you know, kind of thing. And then there's some ridiculous statement behind it. And you're like, really? That's just not going to work. So, yeah, what, what, what other ones are you, do you really get frustrated with? I'm going to say um, about, yeah, so bo- boosting your metabolism, you know, the five or six small meals across the day. That's another good one. I mean, you're, you're busy, I don't know, you're, you're a busy executive or whatever, or, or you know, you're working. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's say you're a teacher. You're a teacher, yeah, in, in primary school or secondary school. How the hell are you going to have six small meals across the day? How, how when are you going to get time? I guess what you do is you put some chicken and rice in your drawer behind your desk yeah. and you make the kids work. And then what you do is you just go down and start munching on some chicken and broccoli. I don't know. I... You know what is another good myth? Out, in fact, the next one, you know how many people have said to me in consultations over the years? So, oh, do I have to eat chicken and broccoli? I hear that's very good. And, you know, like, okay, broccoli as a vegetable, Yes, we know the benefits of vegetables. You know, chicken, good protein source. Yes, we know the benefits. There's thousands of foods out there, you know. There's nothing miraculous or special about these two foods. Mm-hmm. 
It's like, you know, it's funny because um, it's like chicken broccoli. It's somehow seen as like the default kind of fitness meal. Like it's got to be, be in everyone's plan, right? Like, I think um, I blame bodybuilders for that. Like bodybuilders used to see them as their plates of rice, ri- ri- of brown rice, broccoli and chicken, right? So it, it again kind of came over yeah. um, into kind of fitness folklore. I, think, I guess people have almost started nowadays um, confusing or mixing bodybuilding with fitness. Yeah. Or, we, or, or with weight loss, because I think they're all very different. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, so... so what, we've got, I think um, we have a weight loss client in front of us. I just don't think one of the best ways is to say, right, Mondays is your kind of chest and bicep day, you know, that you've got shoulders, legs. You know. There could be a time and place for it. It depends on the person, but... Mm. You know, yeah, that's I'm probably a concerned person about volume across the week. Mm. Um, yeah, trying to hit full body parts across the whole week for me works much better, especially if, you know, if I've only got the client twice a week, yeah. then, you know, two full body sessions so I hit every muscle group is going to work perfectly. Um, but yeah, I think that's often the thing is that people look at, um, they see a lot of these Instagram models, especially, I think Instagram has kind of made a thing for this. And I think I call them six week she- Shelly. No, six weeks Sally, so I say. Not, not Shelly down the road. They're very different. They're cousins, right? And six weeks Sally kind of says, right, in six weeks, if you do my booty program with all these bands and kit packs, you're going to have, you know, glutes. And for those who are listening, that means a bum. That is going to break the internet. But we know that that's not the case. So you hear that? We, I mean, in the case of many of these kind of, um, I don't know, influ- influencers or kind of, uh, say, bodybuilders, all right, you give someone this plan, and let's be honest, you may as well give them the list of your special supplements, you know, because... <laughs> yes. oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started on supplements. Uh, but I was going to say, I think um, the whole Instagram thing is... Um, for many people, Instagram has distorted their expectations. Because mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. think, if you've had... If you've had a certain lifestyle for, let's say, two, three, four years plus, maybe 10 years. Longer, 20 years, some of them. Yeah, you know, how, like, what can you really expect in one month, six months, one year? You know, it's... Yeah. Like, yes, it shouldn't take forever to achieve, um, achieve your goals, but, you know, come on, six months, um, you know, that's... Yeah, I think um, what's happened is, is that, again, you've had these really intense befores and afters, so you've had really, these people, like, doing, like, you know, like cardio every day, lifting every day, training twice a day, um, you know, eating chicken and rice. Mm. So they're in a they're in a calorie deficit, and they think, yeah, six twelve weeks, I'm going to be awesome. And you can get that if you're in a start if you start in a in the if you're in that place to start. But you shouldn't need to have to do that for the rest of your life to make sure that you you know stay on track. No, but there's something you touched on earlier, actually. Um, just about what's the best way to phrase it actually let me ask you this question instead so what do you feel are the biggest challenges for women trying to get in shape what do you think are the biggest what are the biggest pitfalls you see biggest pitfalls i would say for one um patience yeah. i think patience i think uh depending on who it is also just get get it getting started but then I think um, the biggest one is also, I think, the knowledge, because we said a bit um, earlier, there's so much information out there. What does said, said individual follow? Like, are they following this plan? Are they following that plan? And I think even, I, well, I find them in my, uh, sorry, in my experience, some of my best clients now, they said um, before they came to me, they would, have, they would have started one thing, maybe three weeks on, stop for a few weeks, two or three months intensive, stop again. But they always end up at square one again. So I find that often one of the biggest things is even someone just literally could commit to something for six months, 12 months. Yeah, because I think um, like your health needs to be for life. And I think that's the message I try to get across to people is, yeah, that's great. You want to train with me for six months, awesome, you know, whatever. But you have to remember you have to be able to do this for the rest of your life. Because, you know, as I said to someone this morning, I think I said, the weeds still grow in the garden every day. So you have to keep, you have to keep clearing the weeds, right? which is an analogy for kind of health, I guess, in, in some way, shape or form. So, 
yeah, people have to, I think the other one is the scales as well. Like the real reliance on the scales. You're, you're a bit hot there, mate. <laughs> yeah, I think this is reliance on the scale. Yeah, I think for me, I'm quite a big one early on is um, uh, women is um, almost think uh, weight loss, educating them on things which are going to affect their weight and weight fluctuations. Yep. So when it goes down, even right, let's say in their mind they've been doing well for the last two weeks and if it's a slight increase, you say, yeah, look, it's, this is the time of the month, but we expected this. You know, remember what we discussed in, say, week one. Yep. So I find, yeah, I think about um, women, a big thing is um, the education on the things which will affect weight loss. Like some of them do look into scales more than they should do. Um, yeah, well, I get it's oh. just dangerous at, at the end of the day. Well, I think um, it doesn't help when you've got Weight Watchers slimming world. Um, and you've got all these magical supplements that talk about weight loss all the time. So I guess it's, it's in their heads and in their psyche. And also all their friends talk about how much they weigh, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a real big one. Okay, so what's your take on on certain supplements? I won't name names because we probably get sick. Are we? Or tell my one, what the special stuff or <laughs> run playing, run playing? No, 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 no. Bring, bring the special stuff. Bring the special source that, that these the ladies often have, have gone for. Things where, all right, the supplements, um, any, anything which is going to significantly change, change someone or bring them significant results is, is already banned, right? True. That's so, true. true. Yeah. yeah, so really there's, in terms of things which, you see, in terms of things which work here, yeah, they're not going to do anything special. And again, bear in mind what we said at the start, nutrition is a science, yeah? So, we, all right, look now, all right, it's a great day, sunny, sunny, it's amazing weather, yeah? But the majority of the time in the UK, the weather's pretty poor, isn't it? Yeah. Say, all right, so say I have a client, say like myself, I'm, I'm very dark-skinned, yeah? So because of that, I may say to someone else um, who looks, looks like me, like vitamin D3 is going to be a good supplement for you. Because right? you're, you're dark skinned and here are the benefits. It's not going to do something special, yeah? but here you know, it does A, B, and C. The research is all there for you. Yeah. Protein powder. Hey, get protein from um, whole foods if you can. If you can't, use the um, powders to kind of boost your intake. You know? It's mm -hmm. not going to do anything special. Um, think even on that, what I often do, my clients who use protein powders, we get them to um, integrate them into recipes. So make, um, make our yogurts and desserts. Nice, yeah. Again, yeah, some of these supplements are useful, but don't spend a fortune on them, and they're not going to do anything special. Yeah. And also, I'll say, you know what, don't, don't look at them first, um, because there's, there's big, big issues, you know, habits, lifestyle. And these are the kind of main things to address first, in my, well, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think what happens is often is that people take, I think the way that these supplements are marketed, mm -hmm. so let's... Let's use a couple of examples, shall we? I mean, we've had so back in the day we had Slim Fast. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And now we have oh, Herbal Life and the Clean Nine. And I often get often people get upset with me because I say, "Yeah, it's not right. special. It's just a calorie deficit." You're, you're always trolling them, isn't it? I see you online. <laughs> oh well, look, I I just call it. I, I'm, I just believe in honesty and integrity. So if I'm going to tell one of my clients to get a protein shake, I'm not going to say get Herbal Life, which is like 15 yeah. grams of protein per scoop and it's soy yeah. which is not readily bioavailable. I'd rather yeah. tell my client to go to Protein Works and get one that's going to be 20, 25 grams yeah. and be readily uh, available and is about 10 times cheaper. Yeah. That's, I guess that's actually my logic here. Yeah, I think... Um... Actually, I should do a little comparison for one of my clients a while ago, but um, I found, I think, bulk, bulk powder, for what he was looking for, bulk powders was quite pretty good, and, um, yeah, he, he likes it. Not, it's not costing him an arm and a leg, so, yeah. yeah. Whereas, you know, you go, yeah. Yeah, um, but, um, these are slimming groups, and um, so one of my clients, uh, actually, she's, she's a member of one of these groups. Which one? Uh, what's this, slim, Slimming World? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 Slimming World is probably the more likely, yeah. Again, what... Okay, what she likes is the kind of weekly, weekly weigh-ins. And you know what surprised me? I found out the other day that they're told to weigh themselves just once a week. Yeah. So really, off that once a week, yeah, bear, like... 
and especially the fact that it's going to be after work normally. So they've week they've eaten. So you've got like, once a week, yeah. You build no meaningful data to actually get like build, you know, like oh man, I'm actually getting moved now. Oh, calm down. Anyways, calm down. Look, how, how we work around it? She's happy to wear herself four times a week. So I say, yeah, wear yourself four times per week. It's first thing in the morning. I've told her kind of what to ignore because the thing about these groups is the leaders tend to lack any education on anatomy, physiology, nutrition. Um, so again, I think she just enjoys the kind of group accountability, getting my weekly weigh-ins in. So yeah, I think a big thing is that I'm filtering out all the rubbish for her and kind of yeah, mostly have a safe, a safety net, so to speak. So yeah, I think that's a big one. I think um, people go to these groups. And they love the accountability, especially the women that we work with. Um, it's having that group accountability. But I think, like you say, the, the, the consultants are often not trained on nutrition or any of that stuff. And I'll be honest, if anyone can write in who listens to this and could tell me how sins are calculated, yeah. which makes sense, and this goes out to all Swimming World members, I will give you money or something. I don't know. Like seriously, I don't understand sins. I really don't get it. It's friend. Um, yeah, see, we come back onto that, and you know, it's something else that bothers me. You know, the whole thing about kind of cheap, cheap meals. Like, all right, you had a Mars bar yesterday. Like, it's a fucking piece of chocolate. Like, come on, you haven't killed anyone. You haven't taken cocaine. Just move on. You know, what? What did the whole day look like? What does the week? What has this week look like? You know. Yeah, I think women tend to do that, though, that, that very often, the ladies I see, what they do is they come to me and go, oh, do you know what, shouldn't have had that chocolate bar? And I'm yeah. like, okay, great. So that's 250 calories. So tell me where's the other 1,500 calories? Uh, yeah. You know, what else have you eaten today? How big was your plate size? Is, um, did you have any fruit or veg today? I think those are the big, the big wins that people need to focus on rather than just the one chocolate bar. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's just talk training for a minute because I think, yeah, we've, let's, let's hold the nutrition. I think we might have to come back on and wrap that again at one point. But, so just talk to me, what, what kind of, um, what are your kind of basic lifts that you get your clients to do? I mean, I'm, okay, okay, I'm quite big on, again, trying to target the whole body as often as possible. Yeah. So I think, you know, a, squ a squat kind of movement, a hip hinge, a pull, a pull and a press. So in terms of a movement, see, I'm not, I don't kind of live by, say, certain, I, I, sorry, I don't swear by using certain exercises. So not everyone has to deadlift, not everyone has to do a squat, not everyone has to kind of bench press or you know, shoulder press. Yeah, no, that's right. I think it should be like that. That's, and that's where you get individuality, I guess. That's the difference between a um, group training and one-to-one, -one, right, is that people often want the one-to-one -one uh, accommodation of you know everything being nicely done perfectly for them but in a group environment then you have to follow a template right um but yeah you're right push pull rotate single leg exercises oh, that yeah big on those isn't it yeah Wait, what's your favorite the rdl the kettlebell one single leg okay nice 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 and why oh, why, why do you like that one so much it's you know what i feel like sometimes we, we sometimes neglects just those single leg kind of stabilizing kind of movements um i think i find for the women i work with obviously women tend to have wider hips so we need to um do those things more than more strain than me take take that um yeah. obviously i have i have some who are quite into their running so it kind of makes more sense sense to include those things too then um sometimes you know we have this thing where the things we're not so good at we try to avoid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some things that have to be done, you know. You know. Yeah, well, it's funny because um, I think, so for example, lunges is a big one for a lot of my clients. They, they're like, oh, I hate lunges. And I'm like, you do realise you spend probably 70% of your time yeah. in a lunge position every day anyway, don't you? No. <laughs> well, how do you walk then? <laughs> but Walking, you kind of, you go to work, sat down on a bus or train, you get to work, you sat down. Yeah. You sat down. I mean, yeah, it just, you know. Yeah, but every, every movement, every every time you walk, technically that's a lunge position, you know, and people don't realise that um, so much. But like you said earlier, you talked about the angles of hips to knees, the cue angle for, for, the, for the technical people out there. 
And obviously women are more prone to knee injury, so that's why they need to make sure their single leg strength is up there. So Bulgarian split squats for me every day. Love them. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially at elevated. So, you know, when you get clients doing these, yeah, that's where I can see who's been doing their homework, who's been doing their mobility work. Yep. So, you know, in terms of getting your hips here, they, they catch you, you know. Yeah, people forget things like hips and lower back mobility. I think all of that stuff gets neglected. Um, yeah. And I, I, I get people who are busy and they don't have time or... But then time is a is a perception of your own time. We've all got the same twenty four hours in a day, don't we? So, yeah. So, okay. And what what are your thoughts on kind of the current fitness fads out there? In a minute, I mean, obviously we've got things like CrossFit, which is not really a fad anymore. It's pretty much ingrained. You've got things like you know Kettle size. I mean, I used to teach that, for example. But you've got all these kind of group training options. What are your thoughts on them? Um, be honest now. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think think of something that jumps to my mind. Though. But if all right, if I just if I just use CrossFit as an example, um, I think right. Well, yeah, what all of these things have done well is that they they've got more people kind of willing to exercise. Yeah. Um, I think they're very well. Something something I'm quite big on is um, you know, the sense of community, uh, building something amongst amongst clients. Yeah. And I think I think people enjoy those things. So I think these things are good if it gets people going. Um, and then it comes, it comes to the question of, right, we've got, we've got people going in our group, in our group, kind of group, uh, group set up. Now how do we just improve delivery and how do we improve the quality of what we're teaching? You know, so yeah. I think it's really down to who, who's trying to run again, you know, just. Hmm. But I think the main, the main things are if, you, if you've got people kind of moving and they're coming back, you know, then we'll just keep it going. Yeah, no, definitely. I think you're right that we, there's every, 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 you know, kind of exercise class way has its limitations, right? Um, so it's a bit like it's trying to pick up the best of what you've got and yeah. mold them together to get people moving. And as you say, I mean, what, three hours a week is probably what people will mainly do, tops nowadays. Yeah, so on average, yeah. Yeah, yeah two to three, I think it's about two and a half sessions a week is what people really do. So, you've only got two and a half sessions to really get people moving well. So for you, I guess you're trying to get things like mobility, stability, strength, technique, breathing, all of yes. that in one yeah. session. I guess, you know, I think often there's more than meets, meets the eye, but um, I think with experience, one of the best things is just keeping things simple, you know? So I think you know we you know we, we get we get a client we get them going we, we, we're trying to educate them at the same time, and then we start saying right cool you know you know you know how to do your same mobility stuff so twice a week do this at home do this in front of a telly you know yeah I'm, yeah I'm pretty big on that so I love I love um, the accountability because e even if I have someone training with me say three times per week yeah look look all the other times you know, there's a lot can still happen. So in a grand scheme of things, three hours of training with me each week isn't actually, it's not a lot, is it? Well, I think I worked it out. Three hours a week is like 1.7% of your, of your week. Yeah, so not, yeah, not, not, you know, nothing that major, is it? You know? No, but people think that that three hours a week tops. Even then, it's probably not three hours of actual real training, right? You've got mobility and, but three hours a week of, well, let's say two and a half hours of going hard at it is going to wipe out all their, nu their nutrition um, yeah. habits. I think that's a challenge. Yeah. I think that's a real, real problem that we need to get people to understand that we actually don't physically use that much energy when it comes to exercise. Yeah, yeah people tend to overestimate how, overestimate how much they burn from uh, exercise, don't they? Yeah. Um, it's funny as um whenever I get get a new client for one to one, I encourage everyone. Hey, I say see me just once per week. You know, so on top of that, once per week, we're going to, we're going to start teaching you things which you can start doing on your own because you need to own this situation. Like it's your it's your it's your fitness. Yeah. And I think um, I feel like people have people have this belief that if they see a trainer trainer three or four times per week, that's going to mean quick results. It's going to kind of wipe every, every, everything out. Oh. Yeah, some of my best clients have seen me what, what once per week, you know. Well, funny you should say that, right? So I'm I trying to look at some of my data and I actually, 
because obviously I do a lot of group work as well. Um, but I found that actually my online clients do pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think one of the things is because we're so worried about, you know, we really focus on the, the, the lifestyle and the habits rather than the training. Um, yeah, so I think that's a big one. And you, you'll probably see that as you do, you know, your online stuff gets going as well. You'll see, it's really weird. You'd think that we have to be there in front of you. Um, it's and it's funny, but we really don't. Um, I look at, I've got, I look at, say, I've got, so these probably, my three, there's three are doing very well. But then they, they used to train with me when they lived in the UK. So they had almost that foundation built. Yep. I think over time, it's funny how you, you, we kind of understand our body so we can see what's going on. We see this data and it's like, yeah, all right, I, I see what's happening there. And you know, he's got, he's got this event going on. So let's tweak this, move this there. And but it's go, it goes back to um, what I said earlier on about the science and, and the art. So mm. we start to learn about people's bodies, just their lifestyles. We've got a data in front of us and we're just trying to mold things just to fit, fit, um, fit this client. Yeah. And it's, it's just interesting how people, it's really weird, right? So, we haven't, I know we haven't got too long because uh, you're right, you're sweating there, yeah? <laughs> it's, hot, it's hot today. So I think um, one of the big things is calorie deficits that um, I'm not going to lie, people hate me for saying it. People hate that I say calorie deficit um, because it, it, it's like they want to believe this kind of woo-woo magic that if they eat certain foods, it's going to... Um, yeah. And you know, this, this goes back to... Um, I think what doesn't help us is when you have in, in, influencers saying things like uh, eat more to burn fat or oh. what is it? Or, you know, or, or, these, you know, like uh, uh, here's, 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 here's a handful of cashew nuts, but it's okay. Have all of them. They're good fats. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like, you know, I weighed out, so 100 grams of cashew nuts, man, you know how many calories are in them? No, go on. And cashew nuts, I think I done it. Came out to what? Um, I think just under 600, I believe. I was going to say it's about 500 something, isn't it? Yeah. I posted one, I thought it was maybe 580. And I, I look at it and think, you know what? I could finish those in what, two, three minutes? Yeah. But then for an average size woman, yeah, that's like what, probably, well, just a third of my daily allowance, maybe, yeah. maybe even half. Yeah, if she's, if, if, yeah. if clients are 1,500, that's the third of their day gone. And yeah, then, and then all right. So you've got you've got that, and then that's before you take into account, you know, one or two coffees, a little snack here, snack there. Yeah. So and so and cakes, cakes into the office. Yeah. I had a drink yeah. after work before before I went home. Where I had two drinks actually. I meant to go for one, but I had two, maybe three. But Thursday, Friday, Saturday night drinks, and you know, but and the- then the next Thursday night, but I don't get it. I don't eat much, and you know, I like, had some nuts, but you know, they're kind of they're good fats. You read my mind that conversation about, oh, Greg, I need to lose some weight, right? But I don't eat that much, and I'm like going, really? Yeah. But that's why people think often have an aversion to tracking their food. Yeah. It, I think it's seen as time consuming, but actually, I think it saves you a lot of time on the other. Side. Yeah, even yeah. if you just do it for a week or two weeks, just do it for a week. Three days. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm big on the awareness. I'm funny. I got um, actually, somebody joined me maybe two months ago. So I think I think just speaking to her online, trying to give her some tips, and it's taken me about let's say seven or eight months. Yeah, but thank God I finally got her to track. Track for a week. Yeah, she came back to me and said, "Oh, Kevin, I think I know why I'm not losing losing weight because I realised how many calories I'm eating a lot more than I realised, and even even just from snacking, even just from the snacking, like." I was so happy when she, now, now that she now that she has that awareness, you know. Yeah. The thing, Greg, is that I think you're probably the same as me in a sense that um, I look, me I have faith in people, you know. I can't, I like to see the best in people. So when someone says, oh, I don't eat much," look, I know it's not on purpose, yeah. But the thing is that when we're not tracking, even even myself, we inadvertently eat more than we realize. Yeah. The thing is, it's awareness, you know, awareness. Like, yeah, yeah. I think we often eat just out of habit, and yeah. we don't realize that we're eating again. It's like, oh, we're eating again. Oh, okay. Um, and you know what we said earlier on about just preference and kind of how what our, our, our approach is. So, yeah, one of the reasons say I like to skip breakfast is because I know that me personally, I love to eat loads in the evening. I want to have like one big meal in the evening. 
So I'm happy to sacrifice breakfast if that means I can have, you know, double, double for dinner. That's just my preference. Yes. So well, have, yeah, I've got, I've got another client who's doing very well, my client Kelly, yeah? And she's the complete, complete opposite to me. So she eats most of her, of her food the first half of the day. And she can have a very, very, very light dinner, you know, if, if anything. So. But I think and that's why, you know, you can't have this black and white thing in fitness. It has to be grey. And I think the biggest answer is often, because people come to us, what's the best exercise for fat loss? Blah, 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 and I'm like, it depends. It depends. It's so, it's so different for everybody, every situation. But that's why it's called personal, right? You know the whole, it depends on, so I guess, we, yeah, we begin with it depends then, you know, we try and give some context then. But again, it goes back to people kind of wanting that one solid answer, you know. Yeah. So you do these two exercises, you know, you burn fat, build muscle, rev up your metabolism. Oh, rev your metabolism. Like, Those it's, kind of buzzwords, you know. Yeah. It's kind of funny, I overheard in the gym. So this guy says to his client, and his client asks about, oh, do I need to be in a calorie deficit? Because I'm not losing weight, and my friend, my friend says so and so. And uh, the trainer goes, oh, just forget about a size mumbo jumbo, you know, it's all a load of rubbish. And then the funny part is he follows up by saying, eat, eat six more meals across the day to stoke your metabolism. But you just said, yeah, that science was a load of rubbish, yeah, but now you want to discuss metabolism. I mean, do you, do you understand what your, what your metabolism consists of? You know, uh, you know, that's... Yeah. And that, and that doesn't help. And I guess with everything, you'll get trainers that have a little knowledge, yeah. trainers that have, you know, good foundation and we're spending years in the trenches learning from the right people um, to get where they are now. So yeah, we need to wrap up unfortunately, Kev, because I've got, we got, I got, I got clients to see and stuff and you like your sweat in there. So um, yeah. this has been awesome. I really, I want to, I'm hoping we can get you back on again sometime soon. Um, and you've got, a, I see you've got your own podcast, haven't you? So yeah, you know, we should, uh, yeah, we're we'll, we'll talk, you know, and get you in one day, you know, yeah, or I can just do it remotely from here. I can just zoom in and we can do that. That'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. I could check, yeah, I could check out this app, you know. Yeah, so this is called Zoom. So, yeah, it's awesome. Um, but, yeah, so just, just tell people where they can find you on social media and that kind of stuff. Uh, where can you find me? I mean, I like to stay, you know, you know under the radar. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. Yeah, I'm on the what? So, um, yeah. Facebook, like, boy, just if you want to add it, um, our friends of Greg, so look me up that way if you want to connect. Otherwise, our Instagram, Kev underscore performance. Yep. And yeah, just you know, check it out. And yeah, any questions, just hit me up, you know. Cool, awesome. And we need to sort out climbing again soon because I've been a bit slack. Yeah, no, that, uh, that comment, that commentary, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I did the best commentary ever, don't I? So yeah, man, we'll have to do that. All right, then, buddy. You know, you know um, with ever climbing, Mm. I said to a friend of mine, so you do something like climbing and it says, it, it tells you a lot about the quality of your training because climbing is a very dynamic kind of sport. You know, you're not moving with single lines. Yeah. It's got to be up and down. What gets holding, you know. So I was thinking, yeah, I'm kind of happy with how I've trained over the years because I was expected to be sore the next day and, you know. But yeah, you know, we've got, yeah, we've got to get, we'll get another session in, you know, soon. Like, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. That'd be fun. Definitely. All right then, buddy. I'm just going to, yeah, it's thank you for coming on. Thank you for giving me the time, man. Um, Before talking soon. All right, man. All right, cheers, bro. Cheers, man. Bye.